And uh, so, uh, welcome again to this um, to this webinar, Inspiring Experience webinar. And I pass the floor to Karl Damke, who will uh, present the, the, the experience that they're running with Digicom in the Adult Education Network in Germany. Thank you so much uh, for um, having us and for trying to uh, pronounce Volkshochschule. Uh, <laughs> this rather complicated term. Um, so um, we do a split uh, presentation today. First part, me talking about the community of practice regarding the DICCOMP, uh, which we established inside the Volkshochschule community. Uh, maybe like 15 minutes about that. The last three to four years we spent there, everything we did and um, you already touched on some points, Stefano. The second part will be held by Andrea. And Andrea, thank you so much for stepping in for Michael, uh, being sick, calling yesterday. Uh, but you can um, uh, tell us everything <laughs> about Meine Digitale Welt, uh, which is a, a, a huge step for us in using the DICOMP in the VHS community. And please introduce yourself briefly so we have uh, your face and uh, your name connected. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, and again, thank you very much for having me today, replacing Michael, our project lead on this, um, on this program area, uh, Digitale Welt. I'm very happy to um, speak about that later, Carl. And, and the micro back to you. <laughs> Wonderful. So, Hello and welcome to this webinar. Um, it's a huge honor to do this because the uh, DICOMP of practice, the community of practice for the DICOMP um, is, was, is and was a huge inspiration for us in the last years. So let me go back in time, maybe like four years um, and briefly summarize what we did inside the Volkshochschule community and um, I will use my first two slides to briefly talk about who we are as the Volkshochschule. So you can frame that um, everything we're doing here is um, based on 800 institutions in Germany that are calling themselves Volkshochschule, which was uh, like a very progressive movement like 100 years ago, given adult education in Germany a form and a name. So these schools are all running under the same name, but are all very unique and separately run uh, entities. So this is important to know when we talk about dissemination of things like the DigiComp, which is not um, a top-down process, like in a bureaucratic system, more like um, a community-driven or more like a dialogue-based approach because every Volkshochschule in Germany decides for themselves with their um, city or their local government what they are focusing on, which is very important to know and really shapes all the work we are doing. I myself... Um, I'm part of the Volkshochschule family for like 12 years now, started as a teacher, uh, did a lot of programming, um, which means organizing and selling uh, language classes back in Wiesbaden uh, at the local Volkshochschule. And for six years almost, I'm part of the Servicestelle Digitalisierung, which is part of our um, local association here in Schleswig-Holstein, very small but very nice um, state in Germany in the north, close to Denmark. So what we are doing here is uh, helping our Volkshochschulen to um, deal or to construct the digital transformation of their work and of their teachings and Digcom plays a huge part in that. Um, I did a lot of activities uh, in the federal um, Volkshochschule family, which is uh, important uh, to know because we all are linked 
not only the individual Volkshochschulen, but uh, of course our um, associations as we are organized in our state system, 16 states in Germany, everyone has an association. They are members of our federal association, which is the employer of Andrea yeah, and a lot of other colleagues. So um, we did a lot of uh, activities um, regarding the Ditchka. And um, I did a lot of podcast episodes because I'm a podcaster, as you surely recognize this microphone yeah, is a symbol of podcasting here. Um, so we did like 10 episodes of uh, um, Ditchcomp related stuff, unfortunately, or fortunately for the Germans, German speaking participants of this webinar, they're all in German, but if you're interested uh, and uh, understand German, please take a look at VHS cast um, or just chat with me uh, regarding some more specific prompts. So we're going back in time uh, into th 2019 um, when the manifest, the manifesto for digital transformation at the Volkshochschule uh, was first published. And this is the first document in the Volkshochschule community that states that we are using the DigComp as a frame of reference. And this was a huge uh, step through um, because it, as I said, we are a loose network. Yeah, and nobody can dictate what we are doing. But of course, if uh, we are uh, working in a direction, everybody knows where to, uh, what to use. And uh, we started using the ditch comp. So um, we um, were, of course, looking for German speaking adaptations uh, of the ditch comp and uh, found the Austrian version. And I heard you already had a webinar and this is like a very important part of our journey, looking uh, over to our colleagues uh, in Austria, which at that point in 2020 already um, published uh, the DigComp uh, 2280, which had the, um, in our view, the most important part um, using a competence level zero which is important for us as a Volkshochschule community because we are a huge provider of basic education, um, literacy classes and everything in the basic education area. So taking a look at DigComp and saying, okay, this is starting somewhere and there are a lot of people left that are not competent enough to start at level zero, uh, which was a huge breakthrough um, which the uh, 2280 uh, version of the DigComp and helped us a lot in looking at and was definitely a touch point for Andrea and her team uh, developing the online materials at Meine Digitale Welt. So um, we started this community of practice that you mentioned, Stefano, back in 2021. And we used the VHS Cloud, which is a learning management system we introduced in 2018. And every Volkshochschule in Germany can use that. Everyone employed there, everyone teaching there can get a free account and can use it for teaching purposes, but also to network and share ideas and uh, uh, things they're working on. And uh, this helped to found a lot of COPs. So this um, COP focusing on the DigComp is not the first and not the biggest COP we have in the VHS cloud. There are a lot um, of activities there. And of course, you all know digital COPs. Sometimes they are just um, um, a lot of people in but not a lot of active people. And it always depends uh, on which activities are actually held in the COP. And you will see that um, in our own uh, and also in the uh, VHS um, COP. So we started and we had a very 
good start um, uh, gathering over 500 members very, very soon. But this was like mid-corona, and corona so everyone was like, okay, digital, <laughs> digital stuff. Yeah, it's important. We've seen that. So um, let us take a look at DigComp and uh, let us check out the community of practice. So we um, had su very successful online events, a lot of people there um, recorded everything and uh, shared that uh, too. So everyone joining the community right now can get all the things we did in the last four years. Um, everything is documented, everything is there to use and share. And if you guys ask him, of course, it's everything in German. Yeah? So if you're a German speaker, of course, we share everything we have and everything we mentioned right now. And if you're not a German speaker, of course, we share everything we have and everything you are interested in. So you can run an AI on it and uh, uh, translate it to whatever language you need it. Yeah. So we um, had this first webinars where it's mainly the main focus was to share experiences in some of the folks who showing that already used the DigComp and see how they used it so they can be like good practice example for, for the other schools. Um, but we realized that we needed some more materials for people just um, finding their way into uh, the framework. Uh, so in 2022, we released Basiswissen uh, decomp, which is like basic knowledge, which is a small um, self-learning class. And you already uh, touched on this, Stefano. This is something um, along the line that you guys in Ditchcom Hub are working on right now, but on a smaller scale. But because we don't have uh, or we didn't have uh, Erasmus Plus money and a lot of resources, but we tried to uh, to do a small class, which is uh, focusing on getting to know the DigComp and experiencing what it is to talk about digital skills in 2024, which is much more than being able to use a word processor and which is much more than uh, just a specific type of class inside of our schools, which is much more um, and affects everyone. Yeah? So we released this material in 2023, and we had some success uh, with it because um, some uh, circles and groups of uh, colleagues uh, started working um, on it, um, but we're still in the process of refining this material because, as you know, implementing the DigComp is a very, very tough uh, when it comes to long-term effects. Um, and uh, people were always asking, okay, this is a nice first step, yeah, but what would you suggest as step two and three? And we always said, oh... Sorry, guys, maybe you check out the international uh, uh, DigComp COP uh, or maybe wait for the DigComp Hub project yeah, because we aren't able to provide this uh, step two and three because this has to come outside of the community yeah? and fr uh, from people uh, actually working in the field yeah? because it's about implementing and guys like me working at their desk at their association can always hint on what to do, but I'm not a teacher. Yeah? I'm not uh, doing um, the actual work. So this has to be like a dialogue base based uh, thing. And this is why we are st uh, we're very interested in Digcomp Hub. Um, and at the COP and see what you guys uh, do in the field. And we had the huge honor 
um, to work with our colleagues um, at our federal association, Andrea being one of them, and uh, the lead editor in shaping uh, Meine Digital Welt, My Digital World. Um, and we use the COP as one uh, main target, target group or a focus group uh, in shaping um, Meine Digitale Welt. And you got a lot of feedback uh, from the community and were able to um, get Meine Digitale Welt uh, up and running uh, end of last year. And I was be, yes, I am at the end of my presentation. So let me stop the screen sharing and okay. ask you guys if there are any questions you can ask me right now. Um, otherwise, Andrea will talk about Meine Digitale Welt and everything there is to know about that. In case... So please feel free to ask me right yes. now. Or you can ask questions just by switching on your camera, or if you want, you can also write something in the chat, and uh, then, then we can come back to them later after Andrea's presentation, maybe at this stage. Okay, I think we can we can continue, Andrea, please. <laughs> Thank you, Stefano, and thank you, Carl, um, for the first part of our common presentation on Volkshochschule and uh, Digitale Welt, Digital World. I'm going to share my screen with you. Just, just let me know if this is working out well, please. Yes, fine. Thank you very much, Stefano. So I, I'm here, as I said, um, replacing Michael, our project lead on um, VHS Lernportal. VHS is short for the German, very difficult word, Volkshochschule. And um, I'm with um, Deutscher Volkshochschulverband, short DVV. Uh, so we are the umbrella association for all um, German um, adult um, education centers um, and I will just quickly introduce myself. I was just thinking now, uh, I think I've been with the VHS or within that community now for eight years or so. I'm an educational scientist and I joined the team of VHS Lernportal in 2020 after a couple of years of being a freelancer working for them as an author, for example, a trainer, etc. And I'm very happy that uh, I was given this opportunity to um, be part of the team for this innovative, very innovative project within our learning platform to build the digital event. Um, yes, my part now is it to talk about content um, after Carl provided some info on the community of practice within our VHS world. And this is our agenda. I will very quickly um, glance at our umbrella association and the uh, adult education centers. We will have a closer look at VHS Lernportal and Digitale Welt. And I would like to give an answer to why DigComp? And um, of course, um, give us all some time to discuss and uh, you to ask questions. I'll do this very, very quickly. Um, Germany's largest continuing education provider, this is Deutscher Volkshochschulverband. Uh, we are actually based in Bonn. And um, the Volkshochschulen um, provide a lot of very, very important things within the world of adult education. Um, I think lifelong learning, uh, for example, and the holistic education um, attitude are some of the key factors important to the work of all of us. I won't go through all of it. Um, whoever is interested might have a look at the, this more closely um, because we will definitely provide all this material. 
sorry for that, uh, a large number of uh, Volkshochschulen, almost 900, 858, and we have almost 300 branch um, offices uh, across Germany. Um, Carl, thank you very much for explaining a bit on our world um, during what we just said. Um, Deutscher Volkshochschulverband um, is also um, very interested in focusing on um, digital transformation and offering um, things in this related to that. Um, Carl already mentioned our VHS Cloud, a digital learning and working platform, very, uh, very huge platform. And there is like the smaller sister, as we like to call it, the VHS Lernportal. Um, we have a single sign-on, a common one. So this is very, very handy. And we are a learning platform for adult basic education and integration. Um, I'm sorry, I'm I'm giving you a roller coaster effect now. I'm, I'm sorry for that. Um, we have also introduced some apps um, on language learning, um, learning German as a second language. Uh, we published an app for data literacy called Stadtland Datenfluss three years ago. And um, we also um, do some streaming formats throughout the country on topics of data literacy and uh, of city citizen dialogues. I'm very happy to uh, take you with me into VHS Lernportal and Digitale Welt, as we call it. Um, we, as a team at VHS Lernportal, look back on almost two decades um, of experience in online learning in the field of adult basic education and learning German as a second language. And digital competence has thus always been implicit in our learning programs. We offer a complete learning management system with a virtual classroom and many, many functions for teachers. And um, you'll find um, courses for um, German as a second language, as I said, literacy and basic adult education. We are as a project funded by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research and we are free of charge for all users, which is very, very good to know and very important for our users as well. Um, we try to be very responsive when it comes to our design. So um, we should be able to use everything handily on mobile devices as well. And as I already said, VHS Cloud and VHS LAN portal share a single sign-on. And obviously that goes for all the courses on our own platform. I love this picture, to be honest, because it shows um, how many things we now have under one roof combined when it comes to German as a second language, um, when it comes to basic adult education, and to the part of, um, let's say, second chance uh, certificates of uh, school, uh, finishing school, school exams. Um, the error um, shows you where this new digital literacy um, program is located uh, under the topic of basic education. May I introduce you to Tinka and Ben, our two characters you will definitely meet once you enter the digital world and VHS Learn Portal. Um, Taking into account the digital transformation and the increasing challenges everyone is faced with in everyday life as a citizen, but of course also within their jobs, uh, the VHS community express their need for learning programs to tackle the field of digital competence. And the VHS LAN portal reacted to that and started to develop the new learning area, digital world or digital world, I, I always it's so confusing to speak English and put in the German term, so um, excuse me for that. 
um, within our platform. One of the main difficulties we had to face was defining our target group. It was very obvious for all the other courses we planned and established before that to, um, to identify who is really uh, the group we are addressing. And now digital transformation makes us all part of the target group in a way. And um, so we came up with this very, very holistic um, and general definition. We actually address all people in need of strength and digital competence to enable participation in private, social, and in professional life. And we focus um, especially on individuals with basic education needs. That's where we come from. That's what we know. And uh, we won't forget this. Um, a very important group of users of the VHS LAN portal. And you can already tell that's a very heterogeneous target group. Taking into account our core traditional target group uh, within um, basic education and um, learning German as a second language, we opted for a narrative approach, very well um, established in other courses we already published. Our protagonists will accompany uh, learners um, throughout um, the learning process. Um, they will see um, them in situations of everyday life and all sorts of contexts. Um, and as we found out, this is very good and uh, important way to, to um, uh, identify with problems being tackled and situations being met. Again, Ben and Tinka, um, this is our just-in-time support. Um, we give throughout the modules really on uh, specific pages. If there is a new term to be explained, there's going to be a Ben, and you can just click on um, the uh, on, on the button and find an explanation. And Tinker always, always has some good recommendations and tips on how to handle what you just learned or some right information. We found that this is very, very important for which we will um, get to know uh, within a couple of minutes, our foundation level, our level basis, as we call it, um, for learners with a very low um, a level of digital competence so far. As I just said, it was quite a challenge to design a course for such a diverse group, and we opted for a modular design. Each module follows a specific structure with defined framework pages, which I'll show you shortly. Um, we launched the first level, level basis in October 2023 with a first bunch of 44 modules being published and another 16 to follow soon. But let's look shortly into the structure of our module. Each module comprises 10 content elements as we call them or short CE. Um, they can have sub pages. Um, summing up to a total of 20 subpages. Um, we are very keen on having a balanced ratio between text media and exercises and defined exercises to be at least, um, to make up for at least 40%, 50% um, is even better. Um, here you see the first page, um, every user. Uh, will open when he clicks on the go of, on the module he or she opted for. And this is a summary of the learning goals. Um, it's the title of the module, of course, and a picture um, giving a hint um, to the content. And you'll have three questions um, representing what you're going to learn in that module. The second one within the framework um, pages is a short introductory video. 
it's an animated slideshow in the end. Um, it's very simple. Um, we don't have the means to have fancy, fancy um, pictures, but I think it's really doing um, its job. Um, we see a protagonist encountering new opportunities or challenges of the digital world and handling them. This video is then followed by a variety of related content and exercises. Um, we try to break down complex content, of course, um, to simplify it. Audios are supplied for all text elements for those who find it difficult to read texts or longer texts, which is quite, quite a help. And um, knowledge and skills are conveyed simply and vividly using images that illustrate and facilitate the comprehension. And a click on that yellow button being called Ergebnis in German and result in English uh, delivers a direct response to the learners. Here I chose some examples. You see uh, to the left um, a text, text slide introducing um, or giving some info on Sonia who really likes to shop online. Um, and now she gets into that and finds some problems, challenges coming up with that. Second picture shows um, um, one slide from a very basic module introducing how to handle a computer mouse. And you will pick apples by clicking on the left mouse button. And then we have something where you have to sort, is it fact or is it fiction, is it fact or fake news? And a memo game um, um, showing you what you have to bear in mind when shopping online. A quiz or a slider is to follow. Um, asking the slider, asking for the learner's opinion on aspects related to a topic. Um, this is something we can very well use for uh, also asking for attitude. Um, and the quiz obviously is a quiz. Tinka comes back here, always wearing the shirt of the competence area. Um, and she sums up the content of each module shortly. And right after that, the user sees um, his or her learning outcome uh, and um, finds recommendations for next modules we uh, suggest for um, further learning in that context. He or she just um, learned. Having a module structure and not giving a linear way of learning um, everyone has to follow um, is not only full of opportunities. It's also a bit difficult. First time you enter um, Digitale Welt, you might be confused. Where do I start? What do I take first? Um, that's why we um, came up with module packages curated by the editorial team and um, a hand for directly getting into, for example, the topic of getting started with a computer or staying fit with a smartphone, etc. And taking a, a module package will lead you to through all the modules we put in there uh, in a row. But of course, we don't want to dictate um, this to each and everyone, especially the teachers we have in Volkshochschule. Um, they should be free to customize uh, these packages to their classes. They know um, who uh, the, the users are, uh, the learners. So they can individually customize uh, packages as well. We offer a tool for that. And they can do this based on learners' interest and prior knowledge. And that's also a very good uh, tool to um, individually uh, let people let people individually learn within one one class. 
Andrea, five more minutes to go. Thank you very much. Where can these um, modules be applied in VHS course context? Um, I brought with me a list of um, possibilities for that for you to have a quick glance at it, just to suggest that we'll see it being used in open learning um, settings like learning cafes. Um, of course, we can see it in introductory courses uh, when it comes to IT. Uh, for elderly people, um, it's it can be combined with basic education offerings and of course, um, uh, with courses for German as a second language. And as I said, we also um, have, this is one program area also within VHS, the VHS world. We have courses preparing for a school leaving certificate and they come in handy here as well. But why DICOM? I mean, this is important when we meet here. Oh, and I have to learn to say DICOM. I'm sorry for that, uh, my, my German kicking in. Um, well, it provides um, the DICOM as a framework, um, added guiding structural framework work in that. It provides the perfect structure to build a growing learning environment to address new topics, um, and introduce more complex topics along the way. And we were able to tailor it to our needs, which was very, very important. And this was at the same time not an easy task um, regarding the difficult time, as I already suggested. And at the same time, trying to stay within line of the overall structure. Uh, we, we really appreciate the holistic approach uh, we address learners um, mostly, but we do also address teachers. Um, so the possible connectivity with Digcom Edu uh, seemed very attractive to us. And then I'm, I'm looking uh, to Carl now. Um, we have a strong movement within the VHS community to promote Digcom and um, constant and thorough involvement of stakeholders uh, that strengthened the acceptance um, of the offering and helped us shape a course which perfectly addresses the demands of the VHS community. And here, once again, um, uh, goes a very special thanks to Carl and the VHS Digcom uh, COP, uh, where we have been um, very happy to be uh, invited several times to let people have a very close look into our workshop, into what we are doing now, and we introduced them very early um, in within our uh, designing process. Um, and last but not least, of course, um, the publication of the DIGCOM uh, by the EU Commission lends weight to the reference framework and serves as a common basis at a European level. Very, very quickly now. That's what you know, all know. This is the DITCOM 2, 2.2, the foundation for our course. Um, and um, we took a um, large part of the learning goals and we took structure for the digital event. We found um, very soon that we have to um, have a uh, foundation uh, a bit lower in, um, in level and in progression. Um, and we, are very, we were very inspired by the amendments established by the Austrian colleagues. Um, um, I'm now referring to what they call level zero. And um, we thought we might enlarge this, um, give this even a bit more of content and of um, impact and um, importance within our offering. And um, we um, created this, what we call level basis, um, which includes um, seven competences altogether. So we took the DIGCOM structure being the five competence areas 
and um, adapted it when it comes to our level basis because we, we found out that, for example, understanding digital culture, let's say, understanding digital transformation in all different kinds of contexts is of the utmost importance for all learners. So this became one of the of the competences, competent, competences, competences, my God, so <laughs> I have it, within information and data literacy, the first area, um, followed by operating and setting devices, which is uh, the um, second competence um, here. And uh, the same goes for competence area five, problem solving and learning, as we call it, because we uh, wanted to um, add something specifically aimed at um, showing how learning works out, especially in the digital world. And um, I can find learning office, for example, et cetera. Um, the first competence here in this area five um, also aims at um, introducing inclusive um, inclusive offerings, uh, so useful everyday aids uh, for people, for very diverse people, uh, in, includes showing inclusive apps, etc. This is what it looks like. Um, I only have this in Germany, I'm sorry, in German. Um, so meine digitale Welt and the five competence areas showing examples of basic modules. DICOM, DICOM 2.2 um, hinted at a new dimension, dimension four, and um, also stated some topics. Um, and we were very glad to see that because we already planned on having all this um, and, um, integrated into our um, new learning offering. Um, and um, this is going to be even more important now that we are about to develop and work on level one and level two, which brings me to our next steps. So actually uh, right now, uh, 25 new modules for each of level one and level two are um, planned and worked on. Um, we do also see um, a new section for level basis um, involving special low threshold modules for German as a second language. And um, we are currently working on additional teaching aids for classes and teacher guides. And last but not least, just an overview of the team. So this is Michael Thiel, the project lead, and my colleagues Karina, Tuba, and Jana, and finally me. Uh, working on Digitale Welt. And with that, I thank you very much for your patience. And thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Andrea. Very, very interesting indeed. And uh, since we know that, uh, especially Carl has to leave it sh three o'clock sharp, um, let's see, there is a, we have a question in, in, the, in the chat. Uh, from Eva Fabri, who asks uh, Andrea, to you, uh, if you have any German language courses for people with visual disabilities uh, on the, if you have designed, developed, I guess, on the portal, I, I imagine, language courses, German language courses, second language courses for people with visual disabilities. This is a specific question. Uh, um, when it comes to VHS Learn Portal, we don't have that. We try to have a very low threshold um, when it comes to digital barriers. Um, for example, we um, every image we show um, offers alternative text, so we follow these um, standard rules. Um, but there's no special offering um, we have. I'm sorry. Okay. And another question, under which license are the courses released? So is there the possibility to reuse them uh, somehow? Um, if um, 
anyone is interested in um, adapting the material or taking it and um, develop something in a different language, let's say, uh, within their platform, um, we are happy to discuss this. We are not OER, so it's not freely available, um, but we are very open, uh, open and um, if anyone is interested, please just let us know. Okay. And uh, Michaela is asking whether the courses are free of charge. Yes, you said that at the very beginning. Attending yes, this is, yes, exactly. We are totally free of charge. Everything on the HS LAN portal can be used really by each and everyone within uh, a course context within VHS, but also um, for users learning on their own. You can register free of charge, but you can also use a guest account and click into all the modules and see if there's something you like. And of course, if you register, then you have your progression and your account and your modules to go back to. Okay. And I, I, I have two questions myself. Uh, one is we, remaining on the issue of how the platform works. Uh, a teacher with a classroom can use the platform to design a kind of customized uh, path. Um, so the platform offers this functionality uh, in, in case, because it uh, would be very interesting. It is, exactly. that's what we do. We have really a, a small digital virtual classroom that comes with every um, single course. So you can have your classroom, virtual classroom for digital event, another one for um, uh, learning German on uh, A1 level. Uh -huh. And there you as a teacher define which tools you want to integrate. We have some tools we offer and you can click them on or off and have some very uh, nice things you can use within your class context. Digital world went a step further. We even integrated uh, learning portfolios. We took that over from VHS Cloud um, for our regular users, let's say, for the traditional target group. This is quite ambitious. But um, we found this is a very, very important tool when we come to the higher levels for people to uh, do um, work within peer groups, etc. Okay. There is a, uh, Ronja Hölzer asked, uh, raise her hand. Ronja, if you want to switch on your microphone or in camera, if you want, please. Uh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I need to work on this. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. perfectly. It's the wrong, this is the right camera. Okay. So um, I have a question, but also a quick introduction. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I'm German, so I do know what Volkshochschule is, which is great. So I could actually follow also the German slides. I was uh, I joined the network, I think, yesterday. Maybe I was number 1,000. I don't know. I used to just celebrate it. More or less, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly. Uh, and this is perfect. Is a perfect starting point to come here. Um, so, I just quickly wanted to introduce myself because the main piece is that I'd like to connect with with all of you um, on European level, but also on the folks of full level. I work for for GRZ, the German um, Institute for Development Cooperation, that works for BMZ mainly, um, uh, implementing development politics of BMZ but also for the EU, mainly working with INTPA. And in that sense, we also are connected to the um, DigiComp, and I am managing two um, projects that work on digital uh, skills. So one thing is I'd love to be in contact um, again on, the, I will do that over the network on the European level, but particularly also with the Volkshochschule because it is a German connection. If that's fine, then we can connect afterwards. Uh, the, the question I have is, in my uh, project, we work obviously with Africa, we don't work with Europe, um, but we like to understand the European concept because we work regionally Africa, so we like to, to um, learn from what is developed on a regional level, on a European level, and then use and implement it on a, on a, on a, um, on a, le on a national level or in Germany even on a um, federal level. Um, and in Africa, we work very high level with the ministries of education. So my question is, it's probably a bit hard, but it's on a, how do you, the folks of Schule, how do you connect on it with your federal department, with the ministries? Is there any connection on this or is there any politics behind it, maybe supporting? Because the whole point of getting the 
whole society in Europe, in Germany, digitally educated obviously makes sense, obviously makes a huge difference. It's not, more, not just skills and training, but also not just for jobs, but for all the things that you just mentioned, which I find wonderful. Do you have any connection on this or is it purely Volkshochschule because you have the demand? Well, I just quickly answer from our point of view from um, this project, um, VHS Lernportal. So as I shortly stated, we are 100% funded by the ministry. So we have a very, we are very much in touch. Um, um, and this goes under the national decade for um, literacy and basic education. Um, so we are very much in, in, in touch and in contact. Um, when it comes to the rest of uh, VHS community, Carl, maybe you can add to this. Yes, but is there a possibility that uh, I can do this in like two minutes mm -hmm. yeah, without being um, um, too broad and being uh, specific, but uh, Ronya, you can call us and discuss this in more detail. Yeah, but let me, of course, just do the short version of it. Um, there's not um, like a federal approach in backing the Ditchcom in any educational system in Germany right now, not on a broad level. But of course, in specific projects like the uh, Lernportal, uh, it is often used. We had some um, um, similar approaches. There is uh, a paper of the KMK, the Kultust uh, Minister Conference, uh, dated some years ago, but had some um, similar points uh, as the Ditchcom, but uh, this is something that wasn't really worked on and established in the years following. So uh, this is my very bad approach yeah, to uh, talk about a complex topic for like uh, two minutes, but I guess all you being professionals in this field know the problem of implementation that there is uh, all these different projects that you can do um, if you're funded um, and sometimes it matches to a strategy on a national or federal level sometimes it doesn't yeah so you have to see how to fit in and how to make it work and uh, this is something we try as well Thank you, Carl. And okay, I think you probably have to go, but we can, we probably should close the, the webinar. Uh, Ronnie, I just wanted to tell you that I will uh, ping you in the Ditchcom COP to let you know because there is a, a member of the COP from the US, Alison Weber, who is uh, setting up a project in Africa. They are part of World Education and they're using a framework which is partly based on Ditchcom. And, and they're looking for interactions with uh, exchanges with other entities. So I will let you know uh, how, to, how to create this bridge, this link. And okay, uh, we are at three o'clock. I don't know, Carly, if you want to leave, just, just do it, <laughs> no problem. If anyone, anyone else has other questions, if not, we can just close the meeting. And as usual, you will find the recordings and the presentations, Carl and Andrea, if you can send them to me by email, I will post them between today and tomorrow online and everybody will have access to them. Uh, so any other last minute question? I would say no. So, uh, so thank you very much to, to everyone.